So, how's it going? Chassenschaft. So far, so good. <laughs> You're all learning with the same. Uh, um, we going yes, to yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You haven't started yet? No. We didn't start We're all getting married in the next month, right? The next. Uh, mm, one, five weeks. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And you haven't started yet? I guess it's simple. One, two, three. So you know, there's a cloud that uh, the further the further we go from Har Sinai, the deeper we have to go. So, although it's true that Nismatu uh, Hadeiris and Achshedara uh, is not even thinkable, but from the other side, when things get further and, de- and darker and uh, lower, the only solution is to go deeper into Torah and to have more, not less. So there's an attitude that uh, today people are not so so willing for Mercedes Nefesh and for Avoida. So you have to be Mako and you have to... In some things, that's true. But very limited. In most things, the only solution is not less, but more. And what says more? You can't make up. You can't make up new, uh, new dinner. More means deeper. So, in some way, we understand Torah today deeper than previous generations because they didn't need it. Because we need it, we uh, we get more. So if we had to go deeper into marriage, what it means to be a husband, what it means to be a wife, where do you look? Where do you find? Of course, you don't look outside of Tatum. You don't look to secular. So in the Maima that you say before the before the Hasana, it's basically about Mashpi and Mekabu. Mashpi and Mekabu are a process that in Chassidus would be called Pnimis, because Mashpi is the Fierich the Mekabu, and the Mekabu is the Fierich the Mashpi. And it's a Iluva Olul, it's, it's a Pnimis Dika process. And yet you get married under a chuppah, which is a makif. And uh, the ring is a makif, and the circling is a makif. So you have here a combination of makif and pnimi, and uh, one without the other wouldn't work. So let's understand a little bit what this, what this means. The makif part, makif means lamaila metam vadas, because tam vadas is pnimius. So what is a makif? A makif means a commitment or a, a feeling that is lamaila metam vadas. It is not, it's not rational. Essentially, getting married is lamaila metam vadas. Some say Lamata, but let's, let's say Lamai Lamata for that. What does that mean? It means that you're doing something which, according to your Kechis Pnimim, you're not capable. Because if you could do it with your Kechis Pnimim, if you could do it rationally, sensibly, and, and reasonably, why would you do it uh, unreasonably? 
So reasonably, you can't do it. So you have to do it with the strength of the makif of something higher. And so just the very fact that you uh, dedicate your life to somebody for the rest of your life, so my limitama does. But that means that you're dedicating your life to something that is much bigger than you, not just to someone. In other words, you're, you're dedicating your life to the marriage, to the ahdus. The pnimiyas part is the mashpia makabul part, where it's not l'mayla matam vadas, it has to follow certain rules. You have to be the mashpia, and uh, your wife has to be the makabal, and uh, there are there are rules that govern this. What it means to be mashpia, how, when, even why. So let's look at it for a moment. What is the difference between mashpia and makabal? A real mashpia, the way it, the way it's used in Hasidus, with the example of a rav and a talmud, a teacher who is a real mashpia, not not stam a teacher like we like we're familiar with, but the ideal teacher. What is the ideal teacher? Two things. First of all, he gives what is needed. He doesn't just give whatever he wants or whatever he has. He gives what is what is missing. If he's not giving what's missing, he's not a mashpia. Stop to talk about a subject doesn't make you a mashpia. And even being the expert on the subject and teaching the whole world about the subject is not a real mashpia. So all the all the uh, all the advice on how to be a good mashpia, you have to know the mushpa, you have to know your student, you have to evaluate. You know the whole lengthy, detailed description. Because if you don't know your student and you're not giving what's missing, then you then like the like the Rebbe Rashab writes, not only aren't you helping but you're making it worse. You're destroying the Talmud. So, rule number one is that a mashpia gives what is needed. And rule number two, he gives it from the bottom of his heart with every, with, with every ounce of himself. He is completely dedicated to the giving. That's his life. Then he's a mashpia. Part-time mashpia, that's just a job. So when Adam and Chava are thrown out of Gan Eden, Chava is cursed. One of the curses is El Ishech Chukosech. And Adam is not given the same punishment. They did the same Aveda. Why don't they get the same punishment? Okay, uh, she's going to she's gonna give birth in pain. Okay, you can't apply that to Adam. But El Ishech Chukosech, so, so Adam can be punished with the opposite. She is going to be yearning for for him, so he should be yearning for her. <laughs> Unless that's the curse. The curse is you'll want him and he won't want you. <laughs> that's a curse. But uh, that's not correct. So wh- why was she given... What does it mean that she is going to yearn for her husband? You know that ultimately... 
They're not curses. It's a description of life outside of Gan Eden. In Gan Eden, you weren't missing anything. So there was no yearning, there was no hunger. You had everything. Outside of Gan Eden, you don't always have what you need. So if you don't have what you need, what's the result? You're hungry. You're yearning. So the Eberstead is telling Chava, outside of Gan Eden, you're going to be lonely, you're going to be yearning, you're going to be hungry for your husband. Since it's not a curse, so we have to understand it as a description of the nature of a woman. In Gan Eden, things were not so real. He was not a man, she was not a woman. It was, very, it was vague. And that's why they were not ashamed. Because there was no difference. Men, women, what's the difference? Once they realized who they are, there's a difference. How can, you, how can you make believe there's no difference? So now they were ashamed. So not they were ashamed because of Aveda, because of something ugly. They were ashamed because they didn't realize that they were very different people. So before that, they lived under this makiv of everything is one. The Abish that created the world, it's all the Abish that's creation. I make a difference. A tree, a rock, you, me, it's all the same. And that's why it's called Eitz Hadas. They developed a das, which they didn't have before. So now we know what is a woman's hunger. She hungers for her husband. Now we understand what the mashpia is. If a husband is a mashpia, and a mashpia is somebody who provides what is missing, okay, now we know what's missing. The hunger already exists, and a mashpia responds to the hunger. So we started learning chassidus with Rabbi Yehl. It was after years and years of not having any derecheretz for for a malamid for a, it was wild from the first day when Abiel walked into the classroom it was a whole different experience we were we were sh- shocked we discovered that we are talmidim <laughs> and we discovered what it means to actually learn actually learn meaning, not Lagirsa, to actually learn meaning, you're finding out what you always needed to know. So it was it was a mashpia and a makabu. If a mashpia would find out that after a year of hashpo every day for a year. If he would find out at the end of the year that the Makabul was not really interested, didn't get it, didn't appreciate it, if he's a real mashpia, he would be devastated. He would die from heartache because he put himself into the hashpa so deeply and so completely that to find out that it was not Niskabul that the, that the students did not get it or did not take it seriously, he would be shattered. But on the other hand, the Mikabal, the student, who was a real student, like the ideal, perfect student, who comes to the class or to the lesson or whatever it is, with a completely open mind and just wants to hear and learn and absorb and so on and is not hesitant and is not suspicious and he's not, he's not being a chacham and he's not trying to come up with good kashas and he just wants to be makabal. So 
imagine if after a year of being so completely trusting and so completely absorbent, he absorbed every word he heard. Imagine if after the year he finds out that the mashpia was not sincere or the information was not exactly correct. How devastated would the Talmud be? More than the mashpia. More devastated than the than the mashpia when when the mashpia is devastated. And why is that? Although the mashpia gives himself completely, every ounce, you know, ad mitzvah nefesh, he's completely, thoroughly dedicated, so on and so on. He's not as vulnerable as the Talmud who trusts the mashpia. Because to be able to trust completely and let yourself dissolve into the into the uh, into the lesson, into the learning, into the experience, you leave yourself so vulnerable. You've made yourself so that if at the end it fi- you find out that you were tricked or that you were whatever, it is more devastating than than for the mashpia. So a wife has to be able to completely abandon herself, completely, not have to take care of herself because she has someone taking care of her. I'm not talking about financially. I'm talking emotionally. She takes on your name. She becomes devoted to you wherever you go, wherever your panosa takes you, she's going to follow She's giving up her life to be part of your life. Why would any sensible human being do such a thing? Like this guy who says, I'm not getting married. Any woman who's going to trust me, (laughs) I don't want to have anything to do with her. (laughs) Why would she do that? So although she's being a, a, a makabul, and makabul is a sensible, yeah, you're hungry, right? So, so you get what you need. That's the, the pneumistic aspect of the marriage, and that is sensible. But why would she do it? Why would she let herself be that vulnerable? That's the makif. There's something bigger than her, bigger than even her hunger. And that's why she'll do it. But in order for her to be able to do it, she needs to have such total trust. She has to be so confident in you. She has to be so secure. Because if you're not secure, how can you let go? Like a person learning to walk after being on crutches. They're terrified. Without the crutch, they're going to fall. How do you give such confidence that that she would be not willing, but able to completely relax and trust you absolutely and give up everything in her life? give up herself. So that's why it says in the Maima that the husband has to provide koyach, has to give koyach, the mashpia has to give koyach to the makabel to be able to be makabel. It's, it's a penis again, you know? Yeah, so that's where the confusion comes in. You're also a human being. You have your own mind, your own heart, and your own problems. So I'll take care of my problems, you take care of your problems. I'm the mashpi, I'm doing a great job. 
<laughs> you're not Makabul, you're not doing such a good job. So if you can't be Makabul, well then, you know, find a solution. No. If the Makabul can't be in the Makabul, it's part of the Mashpia's job. So in practical language, well, what does the Mashpia do to give Kayach? The Badekan. <laughs> Right? The hachana, the whatever. What does that mean in everyday life? It means you have to provide such security that it enables her to completely surrender and not have to have any worry or, or reservation that maybe she needs to take care of herself and that she can't give everything away to you. <laughs> like, like rationally, they should have a prenuptial agreement. You know, she should, she should save something for herself. Or like some women keep their fam their maiden name, combination. Huh? Right. Good. I'll, I'll be Mrs. You, but also a little bit. Got to keep a piece of myself too. Then, then, then the whole thing doesn't work. It's a bad sign. She's not macabre. You can't be macabre partially. You can't be half macabre. Either you are 100% or you're not 100%. There's no little bit. You can't be a little bit macabre. So how do you provide that kind of security? So the first thing is, your wife agrees to marry you because she feels she doesn't know for sure but she feels she could follow you your life your thinking your your, your values your your she's impressed and she's willing to support you and follow you wherever you go whatever you do The more confidence you give her in what you stand for, what you want, what you're, the more she has to look up to, the easier it will be for her to be mevatel herself and to surrender completely and be a macabre, feel like a woman. And that's why every woman wants a guy stronger than her, smarter than her, more capable than her because if she's going to give herself away meaning her, her seichel and her talents and her, are going to become secondary or even ignored if necessary because she is there to support you and your th why would she do that? because she really respects and admires what you are if she loses that respect it becomes very difficult. Because if she loses respect, she loses the security. And she's not sure why she's doing this anymore. And as soon as she's not sure, she stops being macabre. Because the only way you can be macabre is if you're a hundred percent secure. So we have to be careful not to disappoint live up to her expectations and that's one of the things that is hardly ever spoken about in all the marriage advice columns and all the books and all the which you should not read <laughs> you should not read those books uh, but of all the things that they talk about respect hardly ever because the assumption of the philosophy is if you love each other, that takes care of everything. Why do you need respect for? It's like, shut up, I love you. <laughs> I need to respect you also. The respect is much more important than the love. 
first of all, because you don't really love something you don't respect. So if the respect goes, the love goes. A practical example, for example, about respect. How someone can lose their respect. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, the natural tendency, once you're married and you're getting comfortable with each other, you kind of slip a little bit, you know, so you're not so, uh, so you're not so thoughtful, so you're not so polite. So, uh, you know, she's married to you, she's got to put up with you. And if, and if you're in a bad mood, so you're in a bad mood. And if you're lazy, you're not going to... Now you're trying. Once you're married, people get a little sloppy. You, know. you can't, you can't do that. On the, on the contrary, the longer you're together, the more, the more good things you should find in you, not less. So you don't, you don't become careless or uh, insensitive. So you have to think like this. Ten years from now, is she still going to be impressed with him? <laughs> you know, there'll, there'll be some disappointment. So, you know, let's, let's be realistic. She'll be disappointed that you're not this, you're not that. Blah, blah, blah. But the main thing that she respects in you will grow, not diminish. And that, that lets her be a macabre. She's going to give you a hold to your values and you hold to your... Yeah. And primarily, when it comes to intimacy, where you know, it's so easy to, uh, to get careless and selfish lower your standards of tzniyas and whatever, there you have to be really careful. Tzniyas was not invented for girls in Beisifka, although they think it was. <laughs> tzniyas was invented for husbands and wives. And the tzniyas that we ask, that we demand of, of bochrim and of girls, that's only chinuch. That's, that's on the dirabonam. <laughs> That, that's just preparation. The main, the main importance and the main role of Tzniyas is between husband and wife. So if you lower your standards, you're, you're losing something. You're losing a little bit of her respect, and that's the beginning of lots of, lots of bad news. So, so what happens? Let's, let's finish the description. Atayda says, El Ishech Chukasech. What is that Chuka? What does she want? She wants to talk to you, she wants you to, to stay home with her. What, what exactly does she want? Of course, all, all of those things. <laughs> but what is the main. Because Adam and Chava were created as one person, Zohar and Akeva Bora and then they got separated, that separation leaves uh, an emptiness, a feeling of emptiness, and that creates the hunger. Why is it only one way? Because the di one of the differences between a Mashpi and a Makabu. You can be a mekabel when there's no mashpia. In other words, you can be hungry when there's no food. In fact, when there's no food, you get hungrier. You can't be a mashpia when there's no mekabel. In other words, 
There can be a kasha without a teretz. There can't be a teretz without a kasha. <laughs> what, what are you answering? So you can't be a mashpia where there's no makabu. So you say, I'm a mashpia, but there's no one around to be makabu, so I'm hungry. What are you, what are you, you're a mashpia. What are you, how do you get hungry? So for the mashpia, they got separated from the makabu. The experience is not one of yearning or of hunger. It's one of uselessness. What good am I if I can't be mashpia to anybody? <coughs> yeah. So what was what was Avram Avinu's discomfort? There was no one around to be mashpia chesed. So he was hungry. You can't call it hungry. He felt he felt useless. So both the the, the man and the woman suffer from the separation because it's not natural to be separate. What's natural is that a, a human being should be a male and a female. Should be one person. That's why Adam was created that way. The separation left them both missing something, but in different ways. He is missing like a mashpia feels without a makabu, and she is missing like a makabu feels without a mashpia. So the part is it's the desire, it's just not considered chuka, it's not a yearning? Yeah. It's, it's a huge difference in, in the mentality of, of men and women. It's like Adam is feeling what am I doing here? Why am I in this world? That's not a hunger. It's not he has a need. On the contrary, he, he doesn't. And that feels terrible. What am I here for? What, what does that feeling involve? <laughs> Not I need. Nobody needs me. It's the opposite feeling. When a man starts complaining that he's not getting what he needs, <laughs> he's... Yeah. He's identifying as a female. <laughs> he's, he's being fluid in his uh, identity. <coughs> so when a husband says, she has needs, I also have needs. Okay. So now you have two women, and that's not nice. <laughs> So there's, there's a very different drive. The makabul is real to begin with and is missing something. So, so there's a hunger. The mashpia is not real to begin with because hashpoa makes no sense when there's no makabul. So you can't, you can't be a frustrated mashpia. <laughs> like a frustrated Rebbe. Nobody wants to be his chassid. <laughs> so you're not a Rebbe. Don't, you know, take a hint and get <laughs> and get off the subject. I, I am a Rebbe. I just don't have chassid. No. But there's yeah. that burning desire to be, to be a much better. To be a Rebbe. Why? Because you feel like nothing. Not I am. Well, I'm, I am a Rebbe. Where are my macabre? Where no, if you have no makabu, then you're a nothing. It doesn't feel good to be a nothing. The but that's the opposite. The huh? So the makabu makes the mashpia be, in, be his complete mitzvah of yeah. mashpia. She brings it out in him. Yeah. 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 
how you like differentiate that between sometimes people neediness or overly dependent or oh you know is that the same so if a man know? if you should ever feel needy don't tell your wife tell your much being to your mashpia, you're the, emotionally or whatever. Whatever it is, to your mashpia, you're the makabel, not to your wife. Maybe that's why <coughs> women can say in the bracha that they make, they can say shahasani kirtzayne. I am a finished product, exactly the way they wish to want. Now, where's my mashpia? But a man can't say, I'm a mashbiya. Asani kirtzayne. No, you're not. So you can only say, Shaloy asani isha. But a mashbiya, you're not yet. So the brother should change after marriage, or there's always more to give. So no, the Ebishta didn't make you a mashbiya. Shaloy asani. Because when you're not mashpia, you're nothing. So in a sense, you're more, you're more dependent on her than she is on you. Because she's only dependent for hashpah. You're dependent for your whole existence. <laughs> you're a total nothing without her. So the medrash Taki says, and it seems almost like a joke, but it's, it's a medrash. Medrash says, the Eibush they said to Chavo, El which sounds like a curse because she's going to desperately run around looking for a husband. What happened, Lapoil? When men found out that a wife yearns for her husband, every man runs looking for a wife. <laughs> so who's more desperate? So we see from it that the, the macabal hunger of the macabal actually is irresistible to a mashpia. When men hear that women are uh, but that's true with every a teacher who finds out that a student really wants to know all of a sudden he becomes a real teacher. It opens up all his chushim. <coughs> but a teacher walks into a classroom and they're all tzikrochen and they don't want to be there. How, how could he teach? So the betalmida yesa mikulam makes a lot of sense. How much yesa mikulam? It seems like pick a number: ten percent, thirty percent, eighty percent. What does it mean yesa mikulam? It's not more on the percentage. From my from my chaverim, I got fifty percent, but not without the Talmud, you're nothing at all. So yes, and Mikula, what made me into a into a mashpia? My Talmudim. So, the first thing is that when it comes to intimacy. <clears throat> you have to be the mashpia, which means that, at least on the surface, you set the tone, you make the decisions. Everything happens because of you. The pnimi is it's all happening because of her. But the gilui, the gilui, you're the man, you're in control, you're responsible, it's your mitzvah, everything's you. So you have to be the you have to be the man. And that's I think where where it's a little bit dangerous because you know when it comes to, to appetite, when it comes to hunger, is there really such a difference between men and women? If a man is hungry or a woman is hungry, you see a difference? So 
So it, it becomes very easy or very uh, natural for the man to want to become the, the mikabu. He has his hunger. The truth is, it's subtle, but it's very true. There is a difference between a woman's hunger and a man's hunger. Like, for example, a mother and a father. The father comes in hungry. He's hungry. A mother is hungry. First, she makes food for the kids. It's a different kind of hunger. The hunger doesn't blind her from others. On the contrary, when she's hungry, she makes food for everybody. When a man is hungry, it's just give me my food. <laughs> I have no time, I have no patience. Shouldn't it be the other way? Well, he should want to give. Until it comes to his titles, right? When it comes to his titles, all of a sudden he's, he's the Makabu. All of a sudden he's needy. That's why men have to wash my machlein and women don't have to. Because when a man eats, he becomes completely selfish. I'm not hungry, nobody's hungry. Whereas with a woman, when she's hungry and eats, it doesn't take away her, her sensitivity to other people's hunger. So she doesn't have to watch my machrena. So what is, what is the right attitude or the right... So I think that Rashi says that uh, in Gemara, <coughs> that when a husband and wife are together, it should be ki'ilu kofi shed. Yeah? So people think it means that you should not really want to and you should feel like you're being forced. That, that's not a healthy attitude. It's not good for the children. So I think I think Rashi says. Ki'ilu kofi shed means miskavim lahana osa. That your, your kavana is that she should have hana. That's called a mashpia. So the, the trick is that in in the moment when you have your strongest taiva, don't forget to be the mashpia and don't become the makabu. And if that's true in the bedroom, then it will carry over to everything else in the house. You'll be the mashpia. If in the bedroom it's not, then then the roles are lost. Your identity is, is confused. So, what are you supposed to think under the chuppah? Oh, you haven't gone to class yet. <laughs> Kinder. Which is a little bit like getting ahead of yourself, you know, like... Uh, <laughs> You're not even married yet, you're thinking about the kindred already. But that's a mashpia. You're thinking about the kids. What, what, what about the kids? So you can say, it's a, it's a time when the, uh, when the ace rotsen, when your tfil, when your tefillah is more likely to be accepted. So you should be mispowled that you should have good kids. No. It's not a tefillah. It's a plan. It's a vision. What kind of children do you want to have? Of course, everybody wants good kids. So under the chuppah, you should be mispowled. My kids should all be good. lose an opportunity. You're getting married. There's a plan. There's an intention. There's a future you're developing. Well, what's the future? So under the chuppah, it's not your mispalo for good kids. 
you, fo you focus, you, you, you imagine, and you envision in your mind what a good kid is. I'm good. What kind of children do you want? And why do you have to do it under the hook? Because it tests to a great extent how the children will turn out is starting now. Under the hook. You can say it starts from from when you go into Cheder. But, but practically speaking, it's starting now. How you're going to make children, how you're going to have children, will determine what kind of children they're going to be. So you envision good children means to say you're going to do what it takes to have healthy, good children. And what does it take? It takes a mashpi and a makabu not too macabre and not too much peel. There's a story that I heard when I was, I think just after my mitzvah. That uh, to make a long story short, the Kotzkerebbe who was who seemed to be completely withdrawn, separate, uh, didn't come out of his room for many years. But Lepoil, he knew his chassidim very, very thoroughly. And they once asked him, how well do you know your son? They saw how well he knows the chassidim. They said, how well do you know your son? So he said, my son, I know with which thoughts I invited him into this world. In other words, I know my son from before he was my son. That's what happens under the chuppah. Under the chuppah, you decide what kind of a father you're going to be. And that begins before the child is born. So how you behave in the bedroom that's what kind of a father you are. And not only when the pregnancy happens, it's a, it's a, it's a general theme. So in consideration of having healthy, good children, the attitude that you're really not interested in being intimate and you're being forced by a shed, that would not make good children, make terrible children. In, in, uh, so what is the correct attitude here? In Eitzchayim. Eitzchayim, there is a... He says, why, why was Shevet Reuven, uh, why, why did they settle outside of Eretz Yisrael, not in Eretz Yisrael? Maybe we had it. So the Arizal says, because when Reuven was conceived, Yaakov thought that he was with Rachel and he was really with Leah. So because there was something a little bit off in the Mashpia and the Kabul, because the Mashpia has to be Mashpia to the Mekabal, and he was thinking of Rachel while he was being Mashpia to Leah. So the result was Ruven, and the result is that there's something lacking. He, he, Shevet Ruven can't be in Eretz Yisrael. That's pretty serious, no? And the same is true, David HaMelech says, um, What kind of chet? What kind of oven? Same, same thing. He's... David HaMelech is saying, I, I, can't, I can't be perfect, I can't be because, but Ovin Chilolti. What kind of, what kind of, Yishai was Godel Hadir, was Nasi Hadir. What kind of Ovin? 
same thing. He had two wives, and the night that David was conceived, he thought it was the other wife. So the so the machshava, the intention, the awareness, the every, everything, every detail in the making of the baby has an effect. If if the attention is completely lacking, or if the intention is completely wrong, the, you're going to see it in the baby. So it can't be that you should feel like you're being forced. And that's why I'll be dim. If you're angry, if you're angry at your wife, you're not allowed to be into it. Because if a baby should be born, it's gonna it's gonna be a troubled baby. Uh, certainly, if uh, if a, a husband intends to divorce his wife, decided to divorce his wife, he can't. He's not allowed to be intimate with her. He, that's why he has to move out of the house immediately. Because if a child is born, the child will be a Ben Grushas Halev, which means a very disturbed kid. You're also not allowed to be intimate if you're not focused, if you're a little bit chica, if you're uh, half asleep, if. Uh, There are nine, nine circumstances where you're not allowed because it's not good for the baby. If, if one of you is in Chedem, it happens very often these days. So why a woman is not allowed to be Tevea Bepe? Why? Not sneeze, not nice. It's much more than that. If she has to be Tevea Bepe, then she becomes the Mashpia. That should never happen. So she has to let you know that she's Makabu. She can't become the mashpia. She shouldn't have to. So it's a, it's an art. It's a talent. It's a, it's an avoda. How can you be completely available to her? Umeskavan lahana osa while at the same time all the laws of Tzniyas and all the minhagim that you're supposed to do before and after so are you going to be mechanical and just follow the rules or are you going to be personal and be it's a little tricky here and that's why you have to you have to prepare not so simple so I once heard from a chassid who said to his nephew at the, at the wedding, in the middle of the, middle of the wedding, he said to him, are you a chassid or a masnagid? And the nephew said, what? <laughs> Mitten chassid, are you going to start preaching to me? What are, you, what are you doing? He said, I'm asking you, are you a chassid or a masnagid? He said, what does it have to do? <laughs> well, all of a sudden, he said, because the difference between a chassid and a masnagid is that a misnagid is very serious about the two weeks that you're not allowed to be together. A chassid is very serious about the two weeks that you are allowed to be together. So I'm asking you, are you a chassid or a misnagid? <laughs> what is the difference? The two weeks that you're not allowed to be together doesn't take any brains. No is no, in fact. Any seichel, you don't need any midas, you, you don't need anything. But the two weeks that you are together, this is this is a whole masechta. You have to know what you're doing, how you're doing, where you're doing. What you, for that, you need hachona, for that you need edelkeit. So 
So a misnagid is serious when, when you're not allowed. How not allowed are you? <laughs> that doesn't take any safety. But when you are allowed, I think the Fidik had ever said this once. And a misnagid is very good at fasting. A chosid knows how to eat. Where do you need more seichel? <laughs> Fasting doesn't take any seichel. But when it comes to eating, you have to know what to eat, how to eat, when to eat, how much to eat. So what is the purpose of the intimacy? So Teda says, after Adam and Chava were separated, the Pasuk says, Al Kain, Yazev Ish as Ovev as Imei, Dovag Beishtei Vahayu Lebosel Echad. What does Al Kain mean? If you want to understand what is the attraction of men and women? Taylor tells you, how it came. Because you were once one person and you got separated, that's, that's what you're missing. That's why you need to, to be Basa Echad. Because originally you were. So what is the purpose, what is the, the, uh, the need for the boss at Echad, for the man, for the woman, we understand, she's hungry. What's it for the man? The man is al Kain. Yazev Ish. Right? Because <clears throat> what, what do you need? You're not hungry. What you need is to become echad again, because it's not natural to be separate. Which tells us another thing. If, if it's not natural to be separate, then the separation is caused by something. Because if you were left to your nature, you would be one, like Adam was. So if there's a separation, then something is separating you. So how do you fix that? Obviously, take away the cause, and then you don't have to do anything. So if you take away what's separating you, then you're automatically one. That's, I think, the meaning, Ava hatluya bidavar. If there's a something that's keeping you from becoming one, if you can get to where loy dover, if you can get past everything, well, if there's no thing between you, then you are one. Then your na- your nature will assert itself, and you will be one. Let's go back to how can Yazvish. Take away whatever is separating you, and you will become one. What's, was, what's separating? Like the Amishter separated us. So what is this thing that is separating you? Yeah, that you have to take away. Everything. Everything. And that's why Ava She'ena Tluya B'davar This is L'fnim Meshur Asadin this is Midas Chassidus. To get past all things, meaning you're not marrying her for something, anything, including love. Because that's a thing. You can have two people who do love each other, people, two people who don't love each other. So, so the love is a thing.
So what, if, if you're not marrying for something, then why are you marrying? To become Basarachat. So there shouldn't be something. Yeah. So you're supposed to try to get to this awareness before marriage, or to drop all the dover before? Yeah. So again, going from being uh, from being separate from from dating to marriage, when you're dating, all you care about are things. Every little thing about her. And that's correct. That's that's what dating is all about. Otherwise, you get married over the telephone. <laughs> Hello, what's your name? Let's get married. Why why you date? Why do you go out? To check all the things, right? And when all the things look good to you, you say, "Good, okay, I'm going to marry you." So, are you marrying things? That's what you're marrying. Like when a husband says, I love everything about my wife. That's very nice. Do you love your wife? <laughs> so if you ask the average guy, say, yeah, okay, you love everything about your wife, but do you love your wife? You know what he's going to say? Uh, what about her? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Not about her. Do you love her? I love everything about her. <laughs> he doesn't even see the difference between things and her. Bahayu Labasar Echad means nothing. Just two people with nothing in between. If there's nothing in between, then you're Echad. So, what does that Machavan Mahana Asa mean? Meaning, the Machavan, it's not, this sounds more of like not being separate and this sounds like giving something to her is not that the you. only way of doing it like, that's not me. you not me yeah. because if you're 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 then and you're separating se- right the type of and completely separate people so making the switch here you're focused completely on things and that's why you're marrying her now you're getting married and all things will happen so the way to look at it is like this Ava Hatluya Bedova means you went out with this girl you like everything about her so you marry all those things that's Ava Hatluya Bedova or Bedvorim. <laughs> then there's an Ava She'in Hatluya Bedova. That comes after you're married. Before you're married, you can't have it. Once you're married, it's an Ava She'in Hatluya Bedova. Because now all you want is her. So if in the end all you want is her, why'd you check out all those things? You made a list. I want this, I want that. A couple of girls you said no to because she didn't have this and she didn't have that. The way to think about it is I want to check out everything about her because if something about her is really uncomfortable to me, I won't be able to, to get to her. I'll be stuck. I won't be able to become Basar Echad because this thing really annoys me. And it could be the, the smallest Marishkeit, but if it annoys you, it prevents you from becoming Basar Echad. Anything. So when uh, when Abacha calls and says, I'm going out with this girl, and I don't know, I'm ashamed to tell you, but this little Nadish guy bothers me. What should I do? So said, don't, don't marry her. Oh, over this Nadish guy? Yeah, over this Nadish guy. But, but it's such a petty... So, well, you're a petty person, what can I tell you? If it bothers you, it bothers you. 
It shouldn't. <laughs> it shouldn't. That you should have thought about ten years ago. It does bother you, so don't marry her. Why? Because you're going to get stuck on him. So the reason you check out all the things and you love everything about your wife is so that you could get past all those things and get to her and become Basarechah. What is this goal of becoming Basarechah? What is the taken of that? It's Yichud Zun and Yichud Avo and, and uh, <laughs> uh, why Yichud is a good thing. The whole purpose of the whole my yes, This is one platter and you call it more, but yeah. it's a bitui of Ahvaz and Yerno. Yeah. That's why it has the Koyachin safe to create. How does the list, so to speak, fit with the fact that uh, Zachar is Mashpia? He needs things. He, he, he needs his wife to be Azay, to be Azay. Those are things. Why does he need her? So he can need things, but not need. But the need for things is not Teva. The hunger that a woman has for her husband, that's her Teva. That's her. The guy wants a car. That's him. Some people. <laughs> yeah. The guy is constantly washing his car. So, how do you get past all things? I think one of the one of the main uh, messages of all of Chassidus, which is all of Torah, the Ebesh that created the world. Because although he had everything, he was not satisfied with things. He wanted to get past all things and have someone. Because without that, we don't understand why the Ebrishta, who was already Koyl Yochel and Bligvul and Einsev and Shleimus, Shleimus of the Koyla and so on and so forth. Why do you create a world? So, so the Rebbe says, many, many answers were offered. Why did he create the world? A Melech Belayam. When did he become a Melech? That's not a good explanation. In, on the level of Malchus, in the act of creation, the, the, the Am becomes important because Ein Melech Bulayam. When did he become a Melech? Or the other, Legalis, famous Kechesev. All of a sudden it has to be Megala to whom? To what? What, what is that? There's Gili and there's, and there's Helen. No, there isn't. That itself is created. Why did he create that? Teva ha tevla hetiv. No, tev is created. It's all part of creation. So none of those explanations really tell you why. David David created the world out of Chesed. He created it because of Chesed? No. You know, uh, what is it called? Olu b'machshavta livri asa ilam b'midas hadin. Ro sh'ein ha'ilam m'skayim sh'itivin me'i mitas ha'achanem. So, he didn't create it for the Chesed, he didn't create it for the Gvur. 
He created it with chesed and with gvura. But why? So the Alter Rebbe is Megala, this deep, dark secret. That the real answer is in the Medrash that says, Nesav HaKadosh Baruch. So the way to understand that is, how does something that is perfect have a title? What's missing? <laughs> so, so the convenient answer is, Okay, fine. <laughs> okay. You know, type of the sift answer. Uh-huh. No, but that's true. That's it doesn't tell us Yeah. But what does it mean? It means, I don't know. No, that's not what it means. <laughs> you can't know. The question is not uh, how can he have a taiva? The question is what can he possibly have a taiva for when he had it? If he is Shlemus of the Kaila, so fine. Be- part of his Shlemus is that he can even have a taiva. But for what? But that's the Shaila. If you have everything, including a taiva, <laughs> what is your taiva for? The answer is for nothing, for someone. <coughs> There's a difference between needing or wanting something or needing or wanting someone. If you need something that's a steer to perfection, how can how can Shlemusa do Kaila? be missing something. And even if you say, I don't know, I have a time reflect Mishim Kasha. It's not an answer. How can he be perfect and want something? You say, ah, Frank Mishim Kasha's. <laughs> if that was the answer, we could have gotten to that ten years ago and stopped learning Chassidus. <laughs> because self goes off, I don't know. That's not, that's not the... Is this, sorry, is this the thought process for after marriage, let's say, when something comes up, something comes up that maybe you don't like, but once you focus on the someone, you don't care about the something anymore? Yeah, we'll get to that in a second. Right. So, so... What's the talk of the tension of someone? How, why uh, is that not a need? Why is that not a need? It, 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 is, it is a desperate need. But it's not a steer to perfection. Why? If I'm perfect and all I need is for you to exist in addition to me, imagine if I can't have it. Huh? I can't have it. What am I missing? What does it mean that I am missing someone else? What, 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 what does that mean? It's only by us. If after they were created one, they should separate us. But the Milo, if we were, if he already existed, so if he didn't decide to separate us from him, then he wouldn't want us because we were already there. So, like, it, it's, a, it's a state of the way it we was were, one. Not we were already there, we didn't exist. So I guess in the narrative of Adam and Chava, it wasn't that there's an Adam created as two and was separated and want to get back, but there was only one half, so to speak, or... There was only one mind. There was only one... The, so what's the need for someone else? Like, ah. For us, it makes sense. No, no, it doesn't make sense. We were we were one and separated. But if the Ebesh there... Well, if there's only Ebesh there, so there's no... Either way, of Mashbi or Makabe wanting the other. It is different, of course, obviously. But the Nakuda is 
the Abishter was perfect in himself, but he was missing you. So if I need someone and I can't have that someone, what am I missing? You're missing. The Shaila is, why would I miss you? That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Especially if you don't exist. <laughs> only, only in potential. Yeah? Right. <clears throat> so, all the descriptions of the Ebrishta being who levade, who, you know, that's the problem. That's not, not complimenting him. That was the, the matzav that he did not like. What was missing? Not what. Who? <clears throat> so if you want to ask the question correctly, you can't say, what did they wish to create the world for? So you're wrong already. <clears throat> he didn't create the world for what? He created the world for who? Which now, it all makes so much more sense. What is the first... Uh, commentary, the first Pirush on the word Bereshis. Bishvil. Bishvil Yisrael. No, not, not what for, who for. That's your the immediate question. Bereshis Bara? For who? Uh uh. Yisrael Nikoreshis. So the Ebishta didn't create the world for a what, he created the world for who. And that's not a stated to perfection. <coughs> Maybe the opposite. The only time you can really care about someone else is when you're perfect. Because when you're not perfect, you still want things. If you want things, you're not going to connect to her. So how do you get past all things? How do you be perfect? You become perfect. <laughs> Either lepoil, <laughs> or in your own mind, that's the kind of that you're perfect. Or it means I don't want to be perfect. The male, I'm already perfect. If I don't need anything, then I'm perfect. <clears throat> so sometimes I'm perfect because I don't need anything. And sometimes because I don't need anything, I'm perfect. So once I stop caring about things, I'm perfect. Isn't that a struggle still at the manliness? Like a man, Dr. Lichwey shows once more, Vil. That's a line. Darkei Lichbesh means he's a mashpia. Doesn't mean he wants to grab everything he sees. <laughs> no, <laughs> as a aspire. <laughs> yeah, to take to take responsibility. We're saying, we were saying before that he created the world for someone, and he was saying that there, there was it was just him. So how could you say that all I want is you? There is no you. So. If you think it's just him and he's like, and he separates himself and now there is a you, it sounds a little like, like, it, it, what sounds nice about it is if, if I created the whole world just to have you, but there was no you, so how does that? Look at it the other way. Maybe if there's a man and a woman and the man wants the woman, okay, she's there, so he wants her. If she wasn't there, he'd forget about her. By the Ebrishta, we weren't even there. And he wanted it so badly, he actually created us out of nothing. So if I care, the taiva is even stronger. The uh, main thing is... Taiva the main thing is... The main thing is, I guess, the main thing is, he was not satisfied being himself. So then the question is, how do you fix it? Okay, so in the human being, you, you, you go online, <laughs> you Google somebody. By the Abish, you have to actually create it. 
But Lepoyle <coughs> did create someone else. That's what Bashira means. Why do we have to have Bashira? Because if we don't have Bashira, it's not somebody else. And is our Bechira real? It's absolutely real. So are we really somebody else? Well, yeah, we're really somebody else. But what's the, the goal? The goal is that this somebody else should become one with you. Why are you the So what is the Afatayv effect, Manish Kashi? Sounds a little silly. I want a car. Why? If I type a Frekmanish Kasha, just give me the car. Frekmanish Kasha. It's a taiva. So you're talking about taiva gashmis. It's not lamaila mitam vadas. It's lamata mitam vadas. I've had a mechanic Frekman Kasha. Because you shouldn't have the taiva and cut it out. <laughs> but, uh, but then there's a taiva, vasafa taiva frek manish kasha, because the taiva is bigger than the kasha. A kasha is only al piseicho. So fine, it doesn't make, it doesn't make sense. But the taiva is a taiva. So it's lamaila mitam vadas, not lamata mitam vadas. Right? So what is lamaila mitam vadas? Lamaila mitam vadas is if you're not missing anything and you are perfect. Vasadir Negeya is somebody else. You need somebody else? That doesn't make any sense. Vas felt dear somebody who's not you. You're missing someone who isn't you? So in the secular thinking, in the, in the Veltish of thinking, anything you want is because you need it. If you didn't need it, then, then, then why would you be interested? Here we're saying the biggest taiva of all is to have someone who is not you. That doesn't make sense. That's just the way it is. And that's it. In, a, in a sense, this is the... When you say... You say with atmos. What do we know about Atzmos? That's that's l'mayla me of me shtaushul is l'mayla me. We know that he had this taiva. That being perfect is not enough. That's a lakus a lakus mamish. That you are not enough for yourself. No matter how perfect you are. Kishani la'atzmi? That doesn't make sense. Kishani la'atzmi, everything's great. I live on an island, it's my island, I do what I want. Mo'ani? I'm me. So that, that tenua, that instinct, that even when I want nothing, I want someone that's not me. You're not allowed to marry your sister. Why not? It's the most comfortable, the most sensible, the most reasonable thing to do. You grew up together, you understand each other. What? No? No. Dafke, a stranger. So that taiva doesn't make any sense. And on that taiva, there's no kashas. And where do we get this from? Because we are chelik, nas adam betzalmenu, so we have this tenua also. But it's 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 a lakus. It's not human. Now everything gets turned around. Once she is your wife and you have become Basa Echad, now 
everything about her becomes important. <clears throat> so if a man would say, I love my wife, and I love everything about her, that would be perfect. Because the reason he loves everything about her is because she's her. Because of who she is. In somebody else, he wouldn't care about these things. So like the Shatran said to this guy, I have a shidduch for you, but she is not the most beautiful. He said, that's okay. He said, really? You don't care? He said, no, I'm not marrying her. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't bother me. Every ugly woman that walks by bothers me. Sometimes, hey, be ugly. <laughs> but not if you're my wife. So once she is your wife, everything becomes important. But not because it's a thing, but because it's her thing. So what does the Ebrishter want? The Ebrishter wants to have Yidin. Does he care if we're tzaddikim or benonim? Not really. Once he is beichel in Yidin, now all of a sudden, ah, ah, why aren't you a tzaddik? Not I need tzaddikim. I need tzaddikim. Im tzaddak But you're a Jew. If you're a Jew, yeah, I want you to be a tzaddik. Why? Because you're my aman so not he's looking for tzaddikim, he's looking for Yidin. And what does he want from Yidin? Everything. He wants everything. Everything about you. Your kavana, your, your lack of kavana, your, your, every, everything becomes important to him. So a person says, what's more important, the act of the mitzvah or the kavana? It's a cute question. What's important is the Yid. And his kavona and his act of a mitzvah, they were both important. But what's really important? He's important. So, bein kach o bein kach bonayim, what does that mean? It's not about things. It's about who? So you can take the statement the Satan said Elu ve'elu ve'ev de'avei de'zorah and the Ebrisha said Bein kach and other, other malachim said no and the Ebrisha said what's the difference? What are you arguing? They are Eve de'avei de'zorah not Eve de'avei de'zorah what's the difference? Bein kach bein kach bon ayi ah so it's okay to so okay to have avei de'zorah no. Why is it not okay? Because you're a Jew. So what's going to happen when Mashiach comes? When Mashiach comes, we're going to discover the tainuk that the Ebrishta has from Yidin, not because of Torah and not because of mitzvahs, just because of Yidin. In other words, we will finally be married. All the focus was on the mitzvahs and whether you're a tzaddik or not you know, that was like dating so the Baal Shem Tev came along and said Lazap, a Jew is terrific even a Ish Pasha and you have to love every Jew even the Russia oh all of a sudden what happened over here for a thousand years, the focus was you're doing it or you're not doing it. The letters, so you're not. 
you're eating. It was, it was a revolution. The each push it is precious? For what? For what? Oh, he'll do tshuva. No, 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 no. Not for what? For nothing. Somebody told me that, you know, you think the Satman and Ebu was not an Ayyav Yisro? There was a Satmar Chosad who gave a lot of money to make kosher meals for people in hospitals way back. And he came to the Rebbe, to Satmar Rebbe, with a problem that the non from Jews, they see the meals that they bring to the, they also want. So what should he do? Spend money on none from you. So Satmar Rebbe said, he's in the hospital, yeah? So he's worried. He's stomach, he's doing tshuva. You can give him. <laughs> huh? It's nice. <laughs> so the guy said, you see? Just like just like Lubavitch. <laughs> so it was a slight little different. <laughs> If the guy told you Befeders that he's not doing trivia, we're just talking about it. <laughs> <coughs> so what's the difference? The difference is, is it about something or is it about someone? The tricky thing is, if it's about someone, then everything is important. So it gets a little confusing. So the, so things are important or not important. Especially when you say the column is and then every prat is also, I mean, ask me which one comes first. So who asked, who asked this question, which one comes first? The Medrash. Eza Mehem Kodum. referring to two places in Atmoswat. Leo and he says, yeah. It's a ton of Leo. So cognitive, right? But that is not speaking about like we refer to as what the Rabbi Shab says at least in Promise Atmos. Unless it's like within Atmos group, but I don't know what that means. Mm-hmm. says in Tanya, mitzvahs are uh, what is the greatness of mitzvahs? Mitzvahs are chachmosa yiratzayinu shalakadosh baruch hu hu hamada hu hu ha-yedeya hu hu ha so it's all him then it talks about the sham of a Jew so the sham of a Jew is the Ebesh there because Hu Hayedeya, right? It didn't come from Olam and Machshava. So one second. <coughs> the difference is, if you take a look, I remember exactly. In one, in one of them, it says Hu Hayedeya Hu Hu Hamada Hu, and the other one says Hu Hamada Hu Hayedeya Hu. So there's a very subtle difference whether the the idea comes before the mother or the mother comes before the idea, but either way it's an atmos and so on. But that's talking about the neshama. That's not the taiva. The taiva is not for neshama, you see. So. Taiva is for I, I, for Ayid, which is a neshama beguf. Because once you start talking about the neshama, he has the neshama.
you were saying that the, the tavern wasn't for someone specific because there was not there was nothing else besides him. Right, the tavern wasn't for someone because there was nothing besides him. There wasn't anything other than him, so it wasn't for someone. It was more for him not to be for a someone. For a someone, whoever that happens to be, it's like when a Bachar wants to get married. He's not wants doesn't want to get married to her. I mean, in the usual circumstances, he wants to get married, and then it happens to have a name and a face and a family and all that. It's just that that desire for someone else, not someone specific. So when you say Yisrael, right? It sounds like there is someone specific. There is a Yisrael. If it's if that's bad at someone, then how does that? It would be for a specific someone. I think it's the same is true with the shidduch. You are two halves of the same neshama, but not lamat. That's all. That's all. In, I don't know why when when you say this, uh, the Abishta was perfect. Obviously, like. Okay, so I'm so I'm okay. Who else? Well, there's nobody else. Uh, what? Nobody. There's got to be somebody else. So it reminds me every time I hear it. Mine would, at the end of giving out dollars, the Rebbe would always say, "Anybody else?" <laughs> he already gave out thousands. <laughs> Give me a country, some whatever. It was. They would say, "Anybody else?" To sell the clues. So you're saying it's everybody else? There's always an el- someone else missing. There's never enough of someone else. That's a Miftsoyim, that's that's a lady in Mazulas, that's a Fotsas Mayonis. Who else? Who else? The Zuche Said in. in uh, Sarmatya and never enough of else. What else? So you say we saw it because it's not it wasn't specifically for someone else? That's on the Nishama level. Kulhad is either the Kavana that it should be kulachad, or kulachad means soft, soft, that would, they would be kulachad. But it has to be a kulachad with someone else. So first there has to be the separation, and then. So is it, since the kavana is kulachad, then be'etzem, it is already kulachad. But not the poil. Again, you can say the same thing about marriage. All neshamas are really one big neshama, so what term? In addition to the fact that every uh, every neshama gets divided male and female. All neshamas are one. We're all married to each other. in the world of other which is what counts the most Explain what is it? What is symptom addition? Symptom addition means hunger. Hunger. And he wish to create a hunger, and into that hunger, he find food. The kav and the svidas and elamas. Can we use the simshlashenas song? Like 
Huh? This tea or whatever uses is some sort of a shyness. So we say it sends him his hunger. But he never told his doctor that the symptom is like a vacuum. So you're saying that's hunger? It draws. Yeah. In other words, the symptom is mamshich the kav. So the kav becomes the mashpia, and the symptom is the makabo. The mokam pony does the makabo. So a mokam pony doesn't mean nothing's happening. Mokam pony means hunger. Yeah. So if you want, you can call your wife Tsimtsum. Tsimtsum <laughs> Rishon. <laughs> Possibly that's the pshat that <clears throat> when the world becomes what it's supposed to be, is Isha to save his gever, the mile of the makabal, the power of the makabal. Because Begili, it seems like the Mashpia does everything. Man does everything. It's his house, it's his uh, name, it's his family, it's his minag, it's Everything is him, and and he and darkly shall ish lach lach lachzah Everything is him. That's begili, but that's. Um, Take them any chabaras. Shulcha. <laughs> <laughs>